KB Lake is finally here. I've got my hands on the i7-7700K and I've built an overclocked PC. This video is going to go through everything inside it, how I overclocked it past the Intel safe limits to get the absolute most performance out of this chip, but more importantly this is a head-to-head -head build guide with the tech chap. So we'll be seeing who can build and construct and overclock the best i7-7700K system. But you know what? You can win a GTX 1060 as well, simply by voting in the contest. Stay tuned for all the details. Hey, what is up guys? And welcome back to another video, and perhaps one of the most exciting videos I've genuinely ever done. Over the last three days, I've been putting together and perfecting this system right here which features one of the new KB Lake processors, the i7-7700K. Versus the previous generation, it features between 6 and 7% performance increase at stock speeds, but let me get one thing straight. This thing is overclocked literally to the max, past Intel's safe limits to really get the most out of this chip. Now, obviously, while I wouldn't recommend doing that for your full-time system, it's good to know exactly what these things are capable of. Now, myself and the tech chap have teamed up to see who can build the best system. Now, to make this as objective as possible, we've got exactly the same parts, bar maybe some RGBs and things like that. And these parts were very helpfully put together, or I should at least say sent out, by Asus, Cooler Master and Crucial. Now, the parts for this system are more or less identical, as I say, and they consist of the following. A Masterbox 5T case from Cooler Master. And this case is a standard ATX size form factor. It features a red interior, which gives you a nice amount of accents, especially if you put some lighting in there, it makes it a little bit different to some of its competition, but it's ridiculously easy to build in. You've got so much cable management space, it's insane. And of course you can customize things with additional drive cages, removing things and that. So actually it was fairly easy to build in. I wasn't in a massive fan of the fact that there aren't any cable management grommets, which do mean that you have to work that a little bit harder to actually get a system that's really clean. But as you'll see from the footage a little bit later on, I got an insanely clean build, so it is very possible. The processor is of course the i7-7700K KB Lake Intel processor. And to call this, I've used a Master Liquid Pro and this is a 240 millimeter radiator that does a very good job of keeping this cool even at stupid voltage but again we'll touch on that a little bit later. The motherboard we've gone for is the Asus Strix and this is the Z270F and this is an ATX size motherboard that features everything you need without anything that you don't. I do miss the fact that it doesn't have a little LED indicator with the numbers that let you know uh, what boot codes you're going into if something's wrong, but fortunately I didn't have any issues with this board at all, and I have to say, genuinely it looks incredible. The RGB lighting on this thing is pretty much perfect in my opinion, because it gives you nice accents but it's not over the top flashy and you can customize this as well with the GTX 1060 Strix that we've gotten here, and you can sync up the lighting with an additional LED strip between all three, so you can create some fantastic accent lighting with some additional LEDs, or you can just go whole hog, light the whole system with RGB LEDs, and then have a ridiculous amount of customization. For the RAM, we've got some Crucial Ballistics Elite, 16 gigabytes of the stuff, which would be more than enough for games, 8 is going to be fine for most titles, but there are definitely some titles out there like Just Cause 3 or the latest Call of Duties that really do require more than 8 to get the most out of them. As far as storage is concerned, we've gone for one SSD, and the benefits of going SSD only is you're going to have a quieter running system and it's going to be a lot more nippy. Obviously you're going to need more storage as the single MX300 that we've got here has 275 gigabytes of storage, which is more than enough for a work PC, but if you are going to want to store things like games and 4K movies, yeah, this really isn't gonna cut it. So buy yourself a larger SSD or pair it up with an additional hard drive for more storage. In terms of the power supply, we've gone for a Cooler Master V750. This is a fully modular power supply, which makes creating a very clean system that a little bit easier because you have less cables to manage and it runs very quietly as well with a Silencio fan. So the build process was fairly straightforward. I won't be showing you the full process. I'll be saving that video for a separate build guide video. 
But yeah, it was very simple. I really did like the master box case. So many different options for cable management. And as I wanted to create the cleanest build possible, I had to use pretty much the entire pack of cable ties that came with the power supply. And I wanted to make sure that you couldn't really see any cables at all and that they were all hidden behind the back panel, which was actually really doable. Obviously only having one SSD made this very simple, but the build process was incredibly simple. Now as Tom has pretty much identical parts, I did want to make mine slightly different and to do that I utilised some RGB strips. I used one RGB strip at the top, connected this to the motherboard and then synchronised the aura lighting between the graphics card, the motherboard and this LED strip for an accent lighting because I wanted a prominent colour at all times so I also used a Bit Phoenix purple LED strip on the right hand side, carefully concealed it, these were all magnetic strips. So we've got a purple looking build, but then I've created an accent color on the inside. So we've got nice consistent lighting with some accented RGBs as well, that I think looks really cool. But of course, if you want to, you can change this to fully RGB simply by uh, tagging additional RGB strips onto one another. So there we go, that was the system. I hope you agree, it's really clean. And I think this is genuinely the best anyone can do in this case. So Tom, challenge is out there how can you build a better PC well he may not be able to do that but he may be able to beat me on overclocking but I genuinely don't think he's going to be able to do that as I spent many hours fine-tuning this to get the absolute most out of this chip now before we start a little disclaimer obviously overclocking your chip is risky and while these days it's uncommon if you do it sensibly to blow up your chip it's definitely a risk so I take no responsibility if you want to clone these settings because all chips are different and if you overclock your CPU you're probably voiding your warranty. Anyway, to begin my overclock I wanted to start with the CPU as I wanted to make sure the CPU was stable before moving on to the graphics card. Now to overclock it is very simple with a KB Lake processor, simply boot into your BIOS, go into the AI tweaker on this Asus motherboard and then you can start messing around with the multiplier and the V-Core. There are some other settings that you can change as well, but for my purposes, that's all I needed to change. So the way it works is you have a multiplier, which at its default is set to other auto or 44. And 44 means you get a 4.4 gigahertz of CPU power, essentially. So increasing this to around about 47, I got a 4.7 gigahertz overclock, without really any difficulty at all. I set the V-Core, I think it was to around about 1.3 something, and 4.7, incredibly stable, no problems whatsoever. Clearly that's more than achievable and can be achieved on some mod modest CPU coolers because it didn't get too hot. But because I really wanted to push this to the limit, I cranked this up to five gigahertz. And this is where things got a little bit interesting, as I needed a V-Core of over 1.4 to get it to do so. Intel's safe limit is 1.45, so you really don't want to go over that because that essentially means that your CPU is at high risk and we don't want to blow up the chip. Running at 5 GHz, I managed to get everything stable. I managed to boot into Windows, managed to run all my benchmarks, and there we go, 5.5 GHz, no problem on a KB Lake processor. But that's not all, I wanted to push this thing to the limit. I wanted to make sure that Tom was crushed. And I was talking to him on WhatsApp and he said he was going for, oh, the safe normal limit that people are gonna do. No, this is a competition. I wanna crush Tom. Tom's a nobody. How long's Tom been doing YouTube? He's literally, don't worry about him. He's a nobody, he's going down. So I set this to 5.2 gigahertz. And yeah, I can do it. As much as I tried, I even cranked it up to Intel's safe limits of 1.45 on the V-Core. Could not get this thing to work. Apparently, um, Tech Team GB did manage to get this um, to work with a V-Core of over 1.5, but yeah, you really don't want to do that. And I certainly wouldn't have the cooling to cool a V-Core of 1.5 as your chip can get incredibly hot. So I decided to meet in the middle. I cranked it down to 5.1, and again, I just wasn't having the stability. I was getting into Windows without too much of an issue, then running the benchmarks, it just wouldn't do. 1.45 was simply not enough. So we only went and cranked it up, didn't we? Past Intel's safe limits to 1.46 on the V-Core. Which, like I say, is past Intel's safe limits, but you know what? I got this thing to run in every stability test I could throw at it, 
but the CPU got to 100 degrees for several seconds at times. Um, it didn't thermal throttle, but it was so on the limit, it's ridiculous. It should go without saying, don't do this, because it's fun for benchmarking purposes, and you know, to be perfectly frank, Tom is using the identical chip um, that I'm doing, so if I blow up this chip, he's not gonna be able to do his video, which would be quite funny, um, but I don't think Asus or Intel would be very pleased at all. So yeah, don't do this, but I got it to run every single benchmark, I got it stable, but this is probably a little bit past the limit. But this is a competition and I want to win. So then, after that frankly ridiculous overclock on the CPU was achieved, I moved over to the GPU, as I knew that other than Cinebench, pretty much every game was gonna be tied to the graphics card. So I wanted to make sure I could put a decent performance in when it comes to the graphics card overclock. Now to ruin the surprise a little bit, I managed to get a decent overclock, but it didn't really make that much difference to the game frame rates. In Tomb Raider, I think I gained maybe a frame and a half, two FPS. So yeah, it, it couldn't really do too much. But I did manage to push it quite far, and you do this with GPU tweak, it's very simple. You just simply boost the sliders, so I boosted the power target all the way across, boosted the voltage all the way across, and these should be safe for you to play about with. They wouldn't give you something that isn't. But once again, overclocking your graphics card is at your own risk. I'm not sure if it voids your warranty, but I don't think it does, but don't take my word for it. Obviously, make sure you know what you're doing with your own components. Now, to check that I'm actually giving you the right details, I will have to read this because it's very difficult to remember all these things, but I got my GPU boost clock to run at 1960 megahertz, so that's the boost clock. Um, if you do get a little bit hot, it will start to thermal throttle though, so it's going to depend on your case and obviously your exact sample of GTX 1060. 100% on the voltage and then the memory clock was 8282 megahertz, and then the fi final power I think was 116 on the power target. So yeah, it didn't get me too much in terms of performance, but you've got free performance there. The GPU didn't exactly get any louder than it normally does because the cooling solution on the Strix is so good. So feel free to have a play about with it, especially if you're trying to run games at high resolutions. It could be the difference between you getting stutter around about 60 frames a second and you not. So that was my overclocking process. And then here are the benchmarks that you can start to see on screen. Um, Cinebench um, overclocks, I got a score of 1,107. 3D Mark Time Spy, I got a score of 4,669 and that is with a CPU score of 6,016. Rise of the Tomb Raider on the first run, without overclocking I got 50.23 frames a second, and then after overclocking I got 51.53, so yeah, it was just over one frames a second difference, so it didn't really make too much of a difference there. Gears of War is a very interesting benchmark though, as it shows you your CPU rate, frame rate and your GPU frame rate, and this was running at a CPU frame rate of 246.6 frames a second on the CPU and then on the GPU side of things, 59.6. These benchmarks all running at 1440p by the way at ultra settings where applicable. Grand Theft Auto is still downloading in the background because I made the mistake of buying it directly through them and the downloader is ridiculous. If you haven't bought GTA, do not buy it directly through them. So while I don't have the Grand Theft Auto benchmark, literally I don't know what it is in the second, but obviously I'll overlay it and you'll be able to see exactly what my score was. So this is the point now where I say this has been my build. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you think it wins. To vote, simply go down to the link in the description below. I'm planning at the moment and it should be a Gleam competition link. And to enter the competition as well, to win a GTX 1060, all you've got to do is vote in the competition and subscribe to both the tech chap and of course my channel. Entries that don't do those criteria will not be counted and again I'm not sure at the time of filming but I believe that um, ROG Republic of Gamers is giving some runner-up prizes as well. A massive thank you to Asus for actually putting up this GTX 1060 uh, for the giveaway. It's really appreciated and hopefully this video has been it been very beneficial to all. So go and check out Tom's video. If you've liked this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, make sure you enter the competition and make sure you vote for me. And yeah, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you haven't. Thanks to everyone again, and I'll see you in the next video.